Kia ora koutou, back again today to talk about research on SDG1, eradicating poverty in all its forms everywhere. Humanitarian work psychology has two major facets, the psychology of humanitarian work on the one hand and making work more humanitarian in general on the other. My research on SDG1 started out with the first of these and I think has gravitated towards the second. For example, my early career was spent in Malawi in East Africa. As a foreigner, I worked in cross-national teams and with a range of Malawian colleagues. This country at the time was heavily aided, in inverted commas, by national aid agencies and non-government organisations, NGOs. Much of this aid was undoubtedly well-meaning, but lots of it as well did not seem to be working. Perhaps because it inadvertently clashed with people sustaining their own livelihoods. In one study, for example, we gave situational judgment tests to Malawian respondents. We asked them, would people volunteer their time or would they ask for hourly wages for their time with respect to working on aid projects? Most said people would volunteer. However, some said they would ask for wages, pay us wages for our time and our labor. And this proportion rose with greater exposure to aid agencies, most of whom at the time were Western aid agencies. In other words, people's time was money. They had crops to tend and other things to do to connect it with their own sustainable livelihoods. Aid, however well-meaning, could actually displace their time for one's own sustainable livelihood. In other words, every gift potentially takes something away. A couple more examples. Much of my later research was on global mobility. One question was why people move in the first place. It turns out in our research and from other disciplines and from the UN itself, that the search for a more sustainable form of livelihood with better prospects for the future is a major driver of global mobility, if not in many cases, the major motivator. Once again, not just a job, but a sustainable livelihood for the future and for future generations. One more example. Why people leave their country, their home country, is one question related to escaping poverty. Another is why are they often discriminated against once they arrive in the new country having taken that big decision to leave, to go somewhere else. Work psychology has theories about this from similarity attraction to social identity and social dominance theory. Research studies with colleagues in New Zealand, for instance, has shown that people who just happen to come from different cultures are often more unfairly treated in job selection, and that people who just happen to come from poorer countries in the UN tables, for example, are also experiencing more discrimination in and at work trying to find access to a decent job and a decent sustainable livelihood. More research from journals like International Perspectives in Psychology and a range of others suggests that structuring selection process, processes, for instance, can help to tackle such biases, making work in general more humanitarian. Kia ora koutou. Thank you. Bye-bye.